Welcome back, Action Junkies. We may be only three months into 2023, but the time has come to give you my spoiler-free thoughts on one of my absolute most anticipated films of the year, John Wick Chapter 4, a franchise I adore so much, I even made a short fan film about it. And with the price ever increasing on his head, John Wick finally uncovers a path to take down the high table. But before he can earn his freedom, Wick must face off against a new enemy with powerful alliances across the globe and forces that turn old friends into foes. Now, like I said, I adore this film franchise. I've loved it since the first film in 2014. But just like with anything you love, as it continues to go, as it continues to grow, there is an ever-increasing fear that at some point it might snap, it might break, the magic might be lost. But these movies just do not miss. John Wick Chapter 4 is a nearly three hours of glorious violence that keeps that same craftsmanship when it comes to its technical aspects, the production design, the sound, Everything from a technical standpoint in these movies is just fantastic. It's flawless. But on a deeper level, it continues the expansion on the mythology while maintaining its intriguing mystique as well as John's journey of repentance as he dives deeper and deeper down into hell. And a film that feels very much like a better companion piece to the third one than the previous two films as it feels more spiritual it actually interrogates challenges the ideals and the purposes of what john is doing directly to him so this is yet another win for the franchise not only in its depth and expansive mythology but it's a win for visual stylistic innovation for pushing the boundaries of action choreography while celebrating the giant shoulders it's built upon with jaw-dropping set piece after jaw-dropping set piece it's as if the mentality behind the filmmaking here was let's outdo ourselves from one sequence to the next as the film starts off with this Asian cinema inspired battle royale eventually moves on to a disco soaked John Wick versus a fat suit wearing Scott Atkins fight that is a romp. Atkins is not only having a blast in this role, but he pulls off his impressive signature moves in this fat suit, making them all the more impressive. But that's not all. Much like the narrative spanning across all four films where each story, each chapter feels like the natural consequence and expansion from the previous one, the action here is ever escalating, eventually delivering a live action Frogger inspired chase through the streets of Paris, culminating at the Arc de Triomphe, only to be topped by one of the single greatest wonders I've ever seen put to screen in this rundown hotel. And it's just insane to think how they pulled it off. It's the stunts, it's the choreography, it's the visuals, it's the style, it's the craftsmanship behind every little kink and every technical aspect that makes you all the more admire how easy how natural, how fluid the action moves, and how fluid the camera moves through the action. The overwhelming, exhilarating euphoria of seeing Chad Stahelski committing himself so fully to the craft and the esteem given to action as an art form, as a vital, legitimate element of storytelling, is indescribable and absolutely needs to be witnessed. Not only that, it is brought to life with such unrelenting passion while celebrating the giants that inspired it, standing atop the shoulders of those same giants and bringing in two absolute legends of Asian action cinema in Donnie Yen and Hiroyuki Sanada. 
much like any other John Wick film, this is not going to be for everyone. But whatever flaws this movie might have for you, it gave us Donnie Yen versus Hiroyuki Sanada. And for that alone, I will always worship at the altar of Chad Stahelski. And I need to gush about Donnie Yen's cane. He is just the coolest motherfucker in the world. He is incredible to watch. The fluidity and speed of his movements is just remarkable. And his dynamic with John echoes just how far Wick has come. Really how far he has fallen. Kane is a blind master assassin and yet another tool of the system to stop the monster of their own creation. He is a powerful mirror to John in more ways than one, which makes him a compelling protagonist, but one that never quite had the opportunity or perhaps even the guts to stand up to the almighty high table. It is no coincidence that their first confrontation is in a gorgeously lit room filled with broken glass forcing John to survive by looking at the reflections of the one who hunts him in the name of the table. And by this point, Keanu Reeves has cemented himself and his character as one of the greatest action film icons of all time. Wick's journey through this film is interesting because it is as brutal as it is Futile. A one-man self-imposed crusade of penance fighting against a system designed for one's damnation. The religious allegories have purposefully become increasingly unsubtle through the sequels, and what started as a man looking for revenge became the story of a lost soul searching for purpose, other than the violence he so excellently unleashes upon the world when there's nothing else no one else to go back to. John Wick is on a journey of repentance of his own design, and in Chapter 4, Keanu is at his most emotionally bleak and melancholic. It's a real shame how easy the technical marvel that is this entire franchise makes it to look past the literal Dante's Inferno adaptation we've been witnessing across all four films of ever-escalating action, unique style, consequences, and genuine emotional drama. And perhaps the biggest drawback of John Wick Chapter 4 is its structural design. The John Wick movies started at 1 hour and 41 minutes, with Chapter 2 and Parabellum slightly increasing their runtime, but Chapter 4 runs at a whopping 2 hours longer than the original film's runtime. And do not get me wrong, this film justifies that length. It is a sprawling, globe-trotting, epic odyssey of phenomenal carnage and blood but with the runtime increasing in each consequent sequel at this point you feel the intervals between the action sequences and you are invested in the conflict as bill skarsgård does a fantastic job at playing this conniving sleazy emissary of the almighty invisible table a man who is offered power and control on a silver platter only to see himself lose it more and more once he goes up against the legend known as the Baba Yaga. He makes it so easy to hate him right from when he comes into the scene, and more and more as the film unravels in its viscerally violent twists and turns. So there is something to be said about how the three previous films established a pace, style, and structure to the franchise that this film deviates from. It earns that deviations, it fills those gaps in time, so to speak, with real depth when it comes to the story and the mythos of the world of John Wick, but I think a lot of people will naturally notice it. But as I dive into my final thoughts on John Wick Chapter 4, it's time for the fun part where you start the conversation about it in the comments below. Let me know your favorite kill in the franchise. Let me know how you rank the movies so far. 
And if you've seen it by the time you watch this video, what did you think of chapter four? Anything and everything down there. And if you enjoyed this review, if you want to talk about more John Wick, I have more reviews for chapter two and Parabellum right on this channel. And I talk movies of the, all of the time. So if you want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be. Consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any of future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. Chapter 4 features perhaps the most in-depth dive into the mythology and machinations of the system, of the world the High Table created and controls, seemingly omnipotent beings who oversee those they use and abuse as tools and now feel more deified than ever, but also more in danger than ever. John Wick Chapter 4 is an epic onslaught of prestige action filmmaking. Stunts, choreography, cinematography, all immaculately crafted. A magnificently violent journey of repentance as the Baba Yaga crawls out of hell by diving deeper into it. All hail John Wick, all hail Keanu Reeves, all hail Chad Stahelski. I'm giving John Wick Chapter 4 an A. Thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to talk all things John Wick with you guys in the comments down there. Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And I'll back very soon with more videos. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.